what's up guys, Gift Productions here. So I've been using the Galaxy S22 Ultra for a few weeks now, or actually more than a month now. And so here's my full review and unboxing of The Return of the King. So before I get into it, I want to say that this review is going to be a bit different because I have been very busy with school and so I didn't have a lot of time to edit or even to record this video. So uh, this is going to be a much more fast paced and condensed review. I uh, hope you are able to keep up, but yeah, let's get into it. First thing as per usual, the unboxing, and as you can see, the Galaxy S22 Ultra follows last year's phones with the removal of the charger, so the box is much thinner than the Galaxy Note 20 Ultras for example. I will be comparing this phone a bit to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra because this phone is more or less more of a successor to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra than to the S21 Ultra for example. When you open the box, you are immediately greeted with the S22 Ultra itself. Putting that off to the side, you then have your paperwork, SIM tray tool and USB-C cable, all in this thin paper packaging over here. And that's about it really, uh, Samsung has really cut down a lot in terms of the packaging size as well as the contents that you find in the box. And what I mean by that is basically, for example, the S22 Ultra no longer comes with a plastic screen protector that the Note 20 Ultra did come with. Other things like your charging brake also have been removed like I mentioned. Uh, things like your wire earpieces that it used to include, also gone, and extra S Pen tips, also long gone for a while now. Uh, you even did used to get cases uh, on older Samsung phones even, so it is a bit disappointing that Samsung has chosen to remove a lot of things from the box, but overall it is I guess a bit more environmentally friendly and you know, most people do go out and get a third party screen protector anyways, uh, like this glass one that I have over here as well as a third party case, so it may not be the biggest uh, deal for a lot of people. Also, it is true that I guess most people do have charging bricks at home already, like this 25 watt one that came with my Note 20 Ultra. But here's the thing, um, the S22 Ultra this year is capable of 45 watt charging, and this is a 25 watt charging brick, which means that uh, this charging brick does not give the uh, S22 Ultra its maximum capable speed of 45 watts, which means that if you do want to use 45 watt charging, you need to get a 45 watt charger or higher from Samsung or a third party. Uh, if you are a Note 9 user even, uh, your charging brick is probably a USB-A one which means that the USB-C to C cable that's included in the box is not even you know technically compatible because you don't have a USB-C uh, charging brick. I'll get a bit more into charging later on, so let's move on for now. With the unboxing out of the way, let's first talk about the overall design and ergonomics of this phone. Overall, the design is very similar to the Note 20 Ultra in terms of shape, placement of the S Pen, the, the right side buttons, uh, speakers, microphones, and etc. However, there are some slight differences between the Note 20 Ultra and S22 Ultra, such as the movement of the SIM tray tool from the top to the bottom of the phone, and the rear camera design is obviously different. Um, the metal rails of the Galaxy S22 Ultra are also quite a bit thicker. Uh, they are now even on both sides, unlike the Note 20 Ultra, which had this kind of like thin but then thick where the buttons were. And the S22 Ultra is also quite a bit more heftier and thicker than the Note 20 Ultra. In my personal opinion, I do really like the design of the S22 Ultra and it feels really nice to hold overall. However, I do have some complaints about this phone. So first of all, the camera arrangement. Uh, I think the camera arrangement looks fine. The problem is how the arrangement affects how you place the phone on a flat surface like a table. So the Note 20 Ultra for example had a flat camera bar which meant that when uh, you place it on a flat table, it wouldn't lean to either the left or the right and it'll just be elevated upwards. However, with the S22 Ultra, because of this new camera lens arrangement, uh, the problem is that if when you put it down on a flat surface, the phone actually you know rests on the bottom of the phone as per usual, but also this specific bottom point of the 10 times zoom camera lens. And then when you let go of the phone, the phone will shift its weight to rest on this side of the phone uh, and also resting on this point of the camera lens. Let me show you an example right here. So I put it down and first it is kind of just uh, sitting like the Note 20 Ultra, but when you let go, it ends up resting on the left side of the phone, this corner of the phone, and also this part of the 10x zoom camera bump. And that's actually a problem. Let me explain why. The black color ring around all the camera lenses, as well as the, the, the focus lens, is actually not aluminum, but a black paint uh, on top of the aluminum underneath. And so what I've noticed is that basically the uh, the black paint has started to scratch on all the lenses just from putting the phone in and out of my pocket and actually the black paint of my 10x zoom lens has actually chipped off exposing the very shiny aluminium underneath and the funny thing is that I have not actually even put this phone a lot down on a flat surface and I've actually been putting my phone down mostly like this on top of my wallet so that none of the camera lenses would touch the table because I was afraid of them getting scratched or uh, in this case actually chipped off even though it was not probably from putting my phone down on the table. 
So quite disappointing over there. And that is definitely something to take note of. Maybe get a case or like what I did, I bought these lens protectors uh, that I placed on top of my camera lenses to prevent any further scratching. But I do have to live with the fact that I do have a very massive chip uh, underneath the 10 times zoom lens. Also, as many have mentioned, you do get quite a bit of dust stuck underneath uh, between the camera lenses. So use a cloth or blow it out, but they're still going to be there. All right, but I do want to mention something that I really like about this S22 Ultra, and that is the new green colorway. For the longest time, I've always wanted a green phone, maybe since the, I think the S6 Edge Emerald Green. So I'm finally happy that uh, I'm able to get a green phone. So that's one thing that's nice about this phone in particular. Right, so let's talk about the materials of this phone. So the phone uses Gorilla Glass Victors on the front and the back of the phone, uh, which is the strongest Gorilla Glass you can get yet, but glass is glass and glass will still break. Uh, Samsung also states that the aluminium of this phone is their strongest version of armor aluminium yet, which is the same as the Tab S8 Ultra. I did do a review on that tablet, so do check it out if you want to. Uh, I must say though, the armor aluminium has actually been working pretty great. My Note 20 Ultra's um, aluminium did scratch quite a bit, there's a bit of like uh, scuffing here and there from you know just putting it in and out of my pocket because you know pocket lint probably does scratch the aluminium frame, uh, frame of the S uh, Note 20 Ultra. But with the S22 Ultra, I have not really noticed any, if not just very few micro scratches on the armor aluminium frame, which I guess shows that it is probably more durable than the Note 20 Ultra. So good job Samsung on that part. So now let's move on from the ergonomics and the design. So I want to talk about the front of this phone, uh, mainly the display. First, let's go over the display spec. So the S22 Ultra has a 6.8 inch Super AMOLED display, down from 6.9 inches of the Note 20 Ultra, but more or less the same as the S21 Ultra. Uh, the display is Quad HD Plus at 120Hz, and yes, you can use both simultaneously, which is great. The display also does have a second generation under display ultrasonic fingerprint sensor and the display has a peak brightness of 1750 nits which is extremely bright and hasn't really been a problem at all even on the brightest day here in Singapore. Overall display is super bright, amazing punchy colors but not too punchy. It's also plenty sharp, super smooth and I guess no one will really complain about this display on its own. The only complaints I can see is you know, like the whole punch cutout, which has been pretty much a norm for a while now, and the fact that the display is still curved. And I personally prefer a flat display for the sole reason of being able to find and buy a cheap glass screen protector under 20 Singapore dollars. Because the S22 Ultra's display is still curved, I had to pay close to 60 Singapore dollars uh, on this white stone dome glass screen protector, which within a week already had multiple chips and uh, this nasty crack at the bottom left of the phone. So. Honestly, this is my biggest complaint. Samsung, please just go back to a flat display so that I can buy a cheap screen protector. If that breaks, I'll just buy another cheap screen protector, right? So, yeah. Also, I do want to talk a bit about the under display fingerprint sensor. So, I'm not sure if it's really faster than my Note 20 Ultra, but what I can say is that I've made it a lot worse and slower just by installing this Whitestone Dome Glass screen protector because, uh, I don't know, it just basically stopped recognizing my fingerprint about half the time and it'll be a, a lot slower. Um, but I guess that's just the price to pay, you know, for a glass screen protector that uses UV cured glue on a curved display. But, you know, all that aside, overall, A plus display, uh, I think one of the best that you probably get on the phone right now. Next, let's talk about one of the biggest upgrades that you get on this phone over the Note 20 Ultra, but maybe not so much the S21 Ultra, and that is the camera system. So this year, the S22 Ultra does have a 108 megapixel wide camera at f1.8, which by default bins to 12 megapixels. Uh, on top of that, we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera at f2.2. The bottom most lens is a 10 megapixel 10 times optical zoom at f4.9. And lastly, the camera to the right of the main camera is a 3 times optical zoom, also 10 megapixel at f2.4. So all the cameras do use dual pixel autofocus, which is extremely fast, except for the main camera, which uses the laser autofocus that you find at the top over here in this back circle. These cameras are definitely an overall upgrade to the Note 20 Ultra in terms of everything, except for maybe megapixel count because the 5x zoom on the Note 20 Ultra was 12 megapixels instead of 10, but the 3 and 10 times zoom here are 10 megapixels. However, we know that megapixel count isn't everything, as we can see in these broad daylight photos, it is extremely hard to distinguish which phone uh, these photos came from. The only main differences that you find between these two phones are in the zoom. So obviously, you have higher quality zoom photos at 3x and 10x on the Note 20 uh, 
sorry, S22 Ultra, and you only have, uh, you know, higher quality 5x zoom photos on the Note 20 Ultra. Okay, so I don't want to get too much in the comparison of the photos between th these two phones because I generally don't have the right equipment and expertise to compare the two cameras fairly. For that, I'll point you to other YouTubers like maybe SuperSafe TV, who does really great camera comparisons. Uh, but do note that his version of the S22 Ultra is the Exynos 2200 variant, so there is some difference in the uh, image signal processing as well as maybe the color tones, the way that the phone handles HDR or exposure, things like that. So do take all that into consideration. In terms of uh, video quality specifically, the S22 Ultra is fantastic, stabilization and all resolutions were really solid, and that's on all of the lenses as well. So now I'm recording at 1080p 30fps, which is what most people probably be recording at. It is the default setting. It is very stable as you can see. Here's the ultra wide lens, also very stable. 3x zoom. just as stable as well and lastly 10 times optical zoom it is quite stable but obviously you know being at 10 times it's not going to be as stable as one times lastly i want to talk about the night photos or nightography as samson calls it uh they were really not messing around um the s22 ultra does take better photos than my note 20 ultra uh, in low light. The photos are a lot more clear in the dark areas of the photos and the whole photo is generally just a lot less noisy and slightly brighter. Although I did encounter one weird photo where the phone didn't really seem to know how to process the HDR properly leading to these weird halo lights uh, around certain objects like the flagpole for example in this photo but that was a one-off thing. Uh, I also want to touch a bit on the portrait mode so I generally don't really like to take portrait photos I'm just not that kind of person but uh, when I do, I also tend to just want to rely on the massive 1 over 1.33 inch sensor and you know f1.8 aperture, which does give you a pretty nice natural bokeh effect. But I must say that Samsung has really improved their portrait mode. Uh, in terms of their new AI portrait mode, uh, it does a really good job not just at cutting you out of the background, but it also does a really good job of cutting out you know some individual strands of hair from your head for example. It isn't perfect though, but it still does a really good job, so I am quite impressed. Right, but let's talk about some other new camera features that the S22 Ultra bring. So one thing is the new ability to record 4K 60fps on all of the lenses. Although disappointingly, you can only record 4K 60fps on one lens at a time, which means that, for example, if you're recording 4K 60fps on the main sensor, you actually have to stop recording before you can change the zoom to start recording again at 4K 60fps. This is unlike every other resolution, except for 8K, where you can change the zoom level even if you're recording the video. So maybe at 4K 30, you can record the main sensor, but let's say you want to change to ultra wide, you don't have to start recording. You just press the ultra wide and you'll switch to ultra wide, uh, still recording at 4K 30 FPS. Another new feature that the camera has is the ability to use Pro Mode for photo and videos on all of the camera lenses as well. Previously on the Note 20 Ultra, you could only use Pro Mode on the main camera for both photo and video, so now that you can do uh, Pro Mode on all the lenses, that's a big thumbs up from me. So that was just a brief overview of the performance of all the cameras on the S22 Ultra, and overall I really love the camera system on this, minus the fact that we cannot properly record 4K 60fps on all lenses without having to stop recording to change the zoom, but you know, apart from that, almost no one will be disappointed by the camera system on the S22 Ultra. So next up, performance, and this is really where the S22 Ultra is a major upgrade over the Note 20 Ultra in particular. This year, all S22 series of phones in Singapore get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 instead of the Exynos 2200, and the performance of the 8 Gen 1 completely crushes the Exynos 990 uh, in the Note 20 Ultra in terms of performance and efficiency. Let's talk about some of the other specs though. So we have 12GB of RAM with 256GB of non-expandable storage, which is, you know, kind of like the S6 situation all over again. Uh, but performance is smooth with basically zero lag, except for you know some exceptions here and there. Opening and closing apps is extremely quick. And one of the biggest upgrades for me is how the phone no longer heats up when you're just watching YouTube or browsing through you know your phones for more than a few minutes. Something that the Exynos Note 20 Ultra definitely uh, did. You know when I was just browsing through YouTube or just you know some things, the phone did get a bit warm. The S22 Ultra only really ever gets a bit warm when you do more intensive stuff like gaming or using the cameras. In terms of gaming, I honestly don't really have a lot to say, because I do game on this phone but I don't really play games like Genshin Impact. 
I mainly play games like Brawl Stars, which was already more or less smooth on the Note 20 Ultra, but I guess it's better here because you get the game at both Quad HD and 120Hz instead of just 1080p 120Hz. Now there was some news on how Samsung was limiting the performance of the S22 Ultra during gaming in order to reduce heat and amongst other things, but Samsung has since rolled out an update which I have received as well, which basically stops the phone from throttling performance even at the beginning of the game session when the phone is cool. So basically the phone will still throttle performance, um, which is necessary for a phone with passive cooling, but it only do so at a later stage of a gaming session when the phone does get too hot. But I can tell you that even without you know benchmark numbers, the S22 Ultra uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 version is one of the best Android phones that you can get for gaming right now for a non-gaming oriented phone. I mean it's definitely more powerful than my Tablet Ultra that's for sure. While I'm on the topic of gaming I do want to mention about one thing that I did notice and that is the battery drain. So the battery of this phone does drain quite a bit when you're gaming even for low intensity games like Brawl Stars. My suspicions have indeed been proven by Phone Bath where the S22 Ultra Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 does indeed draw quite a bit of power and drains battery while gaming. So that's one thing to take note of. Since we're talking about battery, let's just you know go over the whole battery situation. So uh, the battery on the S22 Ultra is definitely a massive upgrade as compared to the Exynos Note 20 Ultra. If you watched my long-term review of the Note 20 Ultra, you remember that I used on average about 125% of the battery in a single day. Almost every day, I would definitely need to charge midday in order to put my battery anxiety at ease. Here with the S22 Ultra, the difference is night and day. On average, I've been using only about 73% of the battery in a single day. Only on some longer days, or days where I take a lot of photos or game a lot, uh, I do get near the 100% mark or just use over 100% of the battery. This is not only a big win in terms of not having to be anxious about your daily battery percentage, but this is also really good for the phone in the long run. As someone who charges their phones on the fastest charging speed possible and also, you know, charge to 100%, this definitely means that my phone's battery health does take a hit in the long run. But as we all know, battery health is not only dependent on that, but also how many cycles that the phone's battery has gone through. And doing a little bit of math, we can see that the Note 20 Ultra would have gone through about maybe 912 cycles or so after about 2 years. In comparison, the S22 Ultra would only have gone through about 533 cycles after 2 years. And that difference is pretty huge, if you consider the fact that with the Note 8, Samsung claimed that those phones would retain about 95% of their battery health after 2 years. And honestly, this is a very vague claim, let's just assume it's about 1 charge a day. And that means that the Note 8 will retain about 95% of his battery health after about 730 charges. So in comparison, let's just assume that the Note 20 and the S22 over here will also retain about 95% of their total charge after 730 charges. So as my Note 20 Ultra required 912 cycles in 2 years, that means that the battery health of the Note 20 Ultra could possibly be below 95% after about 2 years of usage. Comparatively, the S22 Ultra, which only uses about 533 charges after 2 years, could possibly mean that the S22 Ultra's battery health could be above 95% after 2 years. All this is very, you know, Ceteris Paribus assumption and just basic math of course, so, you know, there's a, there's a ton of other factors that do affect battery life. All I'm saying is that all things considered, you know, Ceteris Paribus, the battery life and longevity of the S22 Ultra is a major step up. Uh, over the Note 20 Ultra and that is great in my opinion. As I mentioned in the beginning, this phone is technically capable of 45 watt fast charging but as many have tested, this phone does you know, literally almost never reach that peak. In my testing with this cable, uh, it never got close to 40 watts, although I'm not exactly sure how accurate this cable is. Alright lastly let's talk about some of the new features that the Galaxy S22 Ultra brings over its predecessors and yep there honestly isn't really that many. Apart from you know those that I've mentioned throughout the video, um, this phone is extremely familiar and similar to Galaxy Notes of the past, uh, and it, it actually is also quite similar to the S21 Ultra which honestly just lacks the S Pen. If you are a Note 20 Ultra user and you want to upgrade to this phone, it may or may not be worth it depending on which chip your Note 20 Ultra has, and whether you value features like the 120Hz and Quad HD Plus at the same time. Uh, if you are a Note 10 Plus user or older, then this is definitely a solid upgrade uh, and a big part of it is because of the move back to the Snapdragon over Exynos. If you're a Galaxy S user, like maybe an S20 Ultra user, then this phone is also a decently big upgrade, especially since the S20 Ultra was plagued with camera issues. But honestly, apart from that, you're kind of in the same camp as the Note 20 Ultra user, where many of the new features aren't exactly new, but rather just more, uh, more of a small upgrade and evolution that you may actually can live without and or just don't care about. Nonetheless, this is definitely the return of the king that everyone was hoping for. 
And that's all I have to say in this fast paced review. I hope that you're able to keep up along with me. With that being said, uh, thanks for watching. Do like and share this video if you found it useful. Uh, please subscribe as it really helps this channel out. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.